Sure, why not? Um, our notes out? It's up to you. I'm going to write some stuff down. Probably be helpful if you did. So, uh, with this stuff here, uh, exponents and powers of ten. We're just going to get into that first, and then we will jump over into the scientific notation. But these are going to be for numbers that are like really huge, typically in today's lesson. Uh, so, if you have a ten to the third, ten to the third equals a one with how many zeros? Three. Because ten to the third is saying ten times ten times ten. You end up getting a thousand. Ten to the fifth is or one with five zeros, which ends up being 100,000. And I was always taught if you have five or more digits to a number, you should put a comma in there or put commas in. 10 to the eighth then is going to be a one with eight, eight, eight zeros. zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Usually people probably write out the whole number, then they go back and they put commas in because you always start with where the decimal point is. And then you go three away from the decimal, put a comma, another three, put a comma, that type of thing. But we okay for powers of 10? Yep. Yep. And essentially, if you have 10 to a power, the number of zeros after the one is going to be the same as the exclamation point. So, so if we want to take and convert scientific notation to standard notation, so scientific notation is going to be what looks like this here. So if we have numbers like this, it'll always be one number and then a decimal point, and then other digits maybe. And then, but then it's times 10 to some power. So if you want to do ones like that, move the decimal and the number. So I'm up here. Move the decimal and the number the same number of places as the exponent. So all of our examples are going to have uh, 10 to some positive number. So what we're really trying to say is you take and move the decimal point, this point right here, you move it two places to the right. So 3.27 times 10 to the second power, once we move it two places to the right, becomes 327. And you could put in the decimal point at the end for dramatic emphasis if you wanted to, but you don't need it if it's at the end of a number. It's just 327 either way. Good? Yep. For this next one, if I have 3.27 times 10 to the six. I need to move my decimal point six places, agreed? Yes. Well, two places gets me to the end of my number. How many more jumps do I need to do? Four. four. So we need to put four zeros after it kind of to hold the place. So it's three, two, seven. Two jumps gets me to the end of the number. I have four jumps to go, so I write four zeros after it. And I get 3,270,000. It's like our decimal point is there at the end. We just don't have to write it in if it's at the end of the number. Essentially, what I'm doing is my decimal point started here. I'm moving it six jumps. So it puts it there at the end of the number. Um, you have to put the zeros in just so there is a way to have it do those last four jumps. How are we doing? Does that seem to make sense kind of logically to people? Yep. OK. This next one, we move it how many jumps? Five. Five. So how many zeros do I have to add at the end? Two. Because it takes me three jumps to get to the end of my number, I take three jumps away from five. I have how many jumps left? Two. Two. So we have four, eight, one, five, zero, zero. And put in a comma. Are you serious? So the next one we do the same way, even though it has a negative. We just our answer is gonna be negative eight seven. And how many jumps do we do total? Nine. We move the decimal point nine places. So we're moving this nine places. So how many zeros do we add? Eight. eight. So one jump to get to the end, so we have eight more jumps to go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then put commas starting three away from the decimal point. The decimal point would be right here at the end, but we don't write it in typically if, if it's at the end of a number. Page one. Any questions on page one? This stuff here, we want to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So now we're starting with these big numbers, and we want to write it in that scientific notation. So to do that, we always end up with one number. So the format is this, and I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to say it's a number, and then a decimal point, and then I'm going to say numbers till zero. Do you want us to write that? I would. I would. What we're really trying to get there is it's always one number and then the decimal point, and then maybe other numbers until you hit like all zeros and you can stop. Um, but it's that times 10 
to, then the exponent is the number of jumps. And if that's kind of as clear as mud, let's do a few examples and that will help, I think. So give you a second to finish writing that. Now for example five, where is the decimal point right now? We don't have one written in, so we know it is at the end. At the end. So right now our decimal point's right there. We want to put the decimal point between which two numbers? Four and the two, exactly. So we want to put it right there, fair enough? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say by this first part here is you have one number, the four, then the decimal point. Now we want to write the other numbers that we have until we hit zeros, because here's our zeros. So we're going to write 4.268. Is anybody with me there? Mm -hmm. So one number, decimal point, then you write the numbers until you get to the all zeros part. And then we do times 10. Now we just need to figure out how many jumps are between those two decimal points. You can go and count them all out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's times 10 to the eighth. Yes? If you want to save a little bit of time, if you're starting here, the commas are every three, right? So for some of these real big ones, you could just say three, six, and then you have a seven and an eight. So I can save you a little bit of time there. Good? All right, my next one. What goes before, what goes after my decimal point? Five and then a one. Oops, a five and then a one. So, so we do 5.1. And we don't have to write the zeros because it's all zeros to the end. Times 10 to the? Six. Six. Good call. And I'm guessing you did the multiples of three? Yep. You could do three, six, and then you're right there. Or you could do the one, two, three, four, five, six. If it helps you, especially at the beginning, don't be afraid to put the decimal points in like that so you actually can see what you're counting between. Um, my next one then, we write it as 2.81 times 10 to the, not third, fourth. fourth. Good call, Lily. Because, And if you're struggling with these, write in your decimal points. We start here at the end. We want to go to here, so we have one, two, three, and four. So the last one, technically it's like four point, right? Yeah. Usually if there's a number with nothing after it, you just write four. I probably won't mark you down if you, oop, if you do the four point so far. And then if we do four times 10, and our number of jumps would be? Seven. Seven. So we're starting here, we're moving it to there, so we have three and six, and then one more gets me up to seven, so three, six, seven, or you could count them all.